Okay, uh, now we're ready to actually open up NV and open up some images in NV and to start playing around with them and start doing some remote sensing. So uh, the program we're going to be using for the majority of this class is NV 5.0. You can double click on this guy. Um, this is a very powerful image processing software. Uh, it's underlain by a programming language called IDL, which we're not going to get into, but just so you know that. And it is uh, quite useful. So we've brought uh, NV open up, and what we want to do is start playing around with some image files. So we can, and if those of you familiar with Esri products, Arc, Map, and others, you'll notice that list might look fairly similar. Layers over here, toolbox of different tools over here, so this hopefully should be somewhat familiar. Um, if we want to open up an image file, we can click on here and then we can navigate around to the area that we're interested in going, right? So, and this will be a different path based on where you're working. For me, it's going to be under work and um, teaching and, 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 and uh, this guy and labs and lab one and Landsat and there and then um, on, on down. Uh, you don't want to navigate through that every single time so there's a e quick and easy way to, to set it up so it'll automatically open up to the place where you keep your files and I just want to show you that right now if you go under file and you go to preferences you'll notice that there's a selection here called directories and default input directory this is where Envy is going to look for images and this is what it's set to right now and I actually want to change that because I don't want to go through all that clicking all the time that's a big pain um, so I'm going to now set a default directory and it's going like a one-time deal so I'm going to for me it's under work and under teaching again your particular directory location will be a little bit different labs lab one and I'll just say lab one because we're going to open up different guys in there. Um, so now when I go to open up imagery, instead of having to click through all that, I can just say, okay, I'm just going to click on this, and here they are. Uh, and you may or may not see, um, depending on your, 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 your view here, you may or may not see all these different uh, guys. But what you're interested in opening for this one are these different TIFF images. And so you can highlight them all by holding down shift where you click on the first one and the bottom one, and then we can say open. And so we can see it sort of populating here. And then we've got this guy, right? And they're all been clicked, and so we can unclick these guys. Um, okay, if they're all unclicked, we don't see anything. If they're clicked on this guy, we can see um, one here. And unfortunately, I haven't figured out how to expand this guy, but. We can go here, and again, we're thinking about the band names. We're currently looking at the individual file from band 7. Um, here is the individual file from band 5. It doesn't look terribly different. It's of the same scene of 4 um, and of 1 and so on, right? So that one does look actually a little bit uh, different. I would encourage you guys to play around with these different tools up here. There's some pretty cool ones, and, and this one is sort of ridiculous. It's called the fly tool, and you click on here and whichever way you're you know, you're sort of zooming around like you're in an airplane. I'm not sure how useful this tool is but it's quite fun. Um, there are some other tools that I just want to uh, bring to your attention. Uh, one here is the cursor value and this guy's actually really pretty useful. So um, I just want to be in the form of an arrow here and you can see these numbers are changing as I move over the image and they are showing the coordinates of the location where my cursor is and they're also showing um, the value the data value of that particular pixel and you can see right now I'm gonna um, move this guy where I last was at a data value of 43 and the position was in the image 5006 29 04. We'll talk about that numbers in, the, in a little bit, but we also had information from map uh, coordinates. So in geographic latitude, longitude, that's where that location was. In the map coordinates, which are in the UTM zone 13 north, it's this 
um, these meters, right? And then this is something else. This is a military grid reference system. So we actually are, are displaying uh, information here from three different coordinate systems, but they're all indicating the location of that particular um, point. Um, and actually this, this file down here is also giving us information about where this point is located. And that has to do with something called lines and samples. Okay, so this, again, this is all tied to this little guy up here, cursor value. There's also crosshairs, right? So we can click on a place and this will, it sort of locks in, right? So, okay, now I know that, you know, here's this, these coordinates of this guy and here's that data value and so on. Okay, we can also uh, go to particular coordinates up here. Uh, but maybe I'll talk about that one uh, a little bit uh, later. I don't want this guy to get too long. So I'd, I'd highly encourage you guys to, this is the pan tool. You can pan around here. You can do all sorts of, of fun things. Um, and I think I'll give this a break.